Hey, a pleasant good day, everybody. This is Sportsman News. I'm Joe Borick. A pleasant special thanks to the 166 who have subscribed already. Got a six over the November goal now at only November 29th. So pleasant, very good thanks to you. And if you have not already and enjoy the content and have enjoyed the content, please consider subscribing to keep us growing. But let's get into the stellar Texas Rangers offseason. We knew they were going to have money. We knew they were going to be one of the big spenders coming into the offseason. But by golly, did they back it up even more than I think anybody anticipated. Going out and getting two of the best shortstop slash second base guys on the market, where Marcus Simeon is now going to play second base for the Texas Rangers, one would imagine, and the great Corey Seager, who they signed for 10 years, which was a whopping contract, was a little bit surprised by his AAV and yearly total, but that's because just like the Simeon deal that Andrew and I talked about um, in the video he was on with me, it's a deal you take a chance on. You give him seven years at the age of 31 as a late bloomer because you're hoping in those first three, four years, that's when you're able to get the win, or even preferably in the Cole Calhoun tenure, you're able to get the win, and that's even better. But for the Texas Rangers, they signed Seager to 10 years, $325 million. The reason that surprised me so much is more... The talent of Corey Seager is MVP-level player if he's able to stay on the field, just like Marcus Simeon when healthy competed for an MVP last season. But that's the key point. The key thing is Simeon hasn't had as much injury throughout his career. He's just had one really big one where Corey Seager hasn't. He's had a lot of just lingering things, and I'm hoping for him, and I'm hoping for the Rangers, he's able to have that great success because he's a hell of a player and one of the most fun players having popped from that shortstop position being a guy that was doubted, being able to field it because of his size, and he does a very good job at that. He's a guy that, if he can stay healthy, is going to be one of the best shortstops for at least five to six years of that 10-year contract, if not more. As far as I'm concerned for him, it's just all about health, and that literally is it. And then for John Gray, it was really get the hell out of Coors Field. Um, John Gray is a guy that everybody always thought has had more due to his good off-speed pitches, his good spin rate, his good movement. His good, obviously, just electric fastball. He just had to get out of Coors Field. He's now down in Texas. Um, I think this is a good spot for him. He's going to get to be able to be down there for four years, $46 million, where if he becomes a very steady third starter for you, like I believe he has a very good chance to become as he hones it in. He's kind of one of those Gosman type guys because Wheeler was really projected as a guy that was a goat and then kind of fell for a couple years due to injuries and then really bounced back and, of course, was second in Cy Young this year. Where, when it comes to John Gray, he's kind of like one of those Gosman guys that at one time with Baltimore, you kind of thought he was going to get going, he was going to be a guy, never really was able to find it going, and then goes to the Giants and absolutely figures it out, and obviously gets rewarded um, with a contract by the Blue Jays this offseason because of such. But, when it comes to the Rangers, that was a very smart move, locking down John Gray, because four years, $46 million, we don't know what's going to come at the end of this CBA, whenever the hell it's decided after the December 2nd when there's an impending lockout that's likely going to happen except for a miracle. But that's a very solid contract in terms of where the market is um, with pitchers four years, 56 million. If he develops into that very steady Eddie third starter, you got a bargain there. And then you got Marcus Simeon, one of the best hitters, one of the guys that turned himself into work just behind off. Rear end was a very bad fielder when he first came up. Now is a very solid fielder, two very good fielder, honestly. Especially at second base, not having to range as much. I think he's going to fare very well there, just like we saw Gene Segura fare his best in Philly pinstripes last year, playing a full season at second base and having his best fielding season. Um, And he's a better player than Gene Segura, obviously, Marcus Simeon. And then when it comes to Corey Seager, again, health. When it comes to John Gray, get him the hell out of Coors Field. Now he's going to be pitching in a home stadium in Texas. Does it still give up some home runs? Sure, but it's a lot better than Coors Field. And it's a stadium that's going to fare to him, I think, a lot better, as well as pitching in that division that he's not going to have to um, even worry about going back to Coors Field, obviously, other than just a select few times, pitching against the Angels, pitching against... The Mariners, who are, of course, not a hitter's ballpark. And then Oakland, which is a mix, but still a pretty good ballpark for pitchers. So I think he'll fare better in this division, John Gray. And then last but certainly not least, they get the fielding wizard, the guy that adds very good home run. NRBI potential never has been the most consistent contact hitter, but a guy that gets it done in all facets of the game, fielding, driving in runs, and kind of being a good Mr. Clutch during his time with the Angels as well as other clubs is Cole Calhoun. 
is they are able to make the move to bring in the veteran outfielder Calhoun, who is one of those players that is power and fielding, I think, is the best way to describe Cole Calhoun. He has absolutely ballistic power when he really gets a hold of the ball. He's a career 248 hit with 161 home runs and a 15.6 ward and 3,903 at-bat and 966 hits. So he's a guy that obviously, as we know from his time when he's had 74 RBI, 75, 71, 83, his best in 2015 with the Angels there. And then he goes to the Arizona Cardinals. Um, the, or not Arizona Cardinals, I'm sure Diamondback. And um, doesn't do as well there, but that's with the Diamondbacks team. He obviously doesn't have as much padding in his lineup as he did with the Angels team, who wasn't the sexiest lineup, but was deeper than that Diamondbacks team, that he was one of the just more steady, consistent players on that team when you just looked at the lineup on paper. But I think that's a great pickup, great fielder, good arm, a guy that can hit in runners, never going to have the best average, but good fielder, and can throw guys out as well. That's a good pickup. Seager, brilliant pickup. Simeon, brilliant pickup. And Gray, very good under, the, not under the radar, but very good savvy pickup, I think is a way to put it, because he has the best ahead of him. I think, and that is going to be what we're going to see with the Texas Rangers with John Gray, where he's going to have a chance to develop into that three, and then if he develops into a steady two, that is really a bargain of a contract. So this has been a video on the Texas Rangers offseason this fall that has to get an A grade, if it, if you could give it an A++, but normally I try to do these, except for when I really go over static, but this is one you probably could say it's been an A++ this fall to go over a static one, because Simeon and Seager in itself. Is just ridiculous. We knew the Rangers were going to spend money, but I mean, come on. You, you, you've got, you gave Simeon over a hundred million, and he gave Seager over three hundred million. I mean, I don't think we saw them spending. We might have saw them spending money, but I don't think we saw them spending that much money. And they did. They went out and got it. You gave uh, Gray over fifty million, and then I can't exactly remember the um, total that they gave Calhoun for his two-year deal. But they were able to really bring in a good four players here. <clears throat> and I don't think they're even remotely close to being done yet. I wouldn't be surprised if even before the CBA um, expires on the second, if you see the Rangers with the offseason they were expected to have and keep spending at even more pitching, especially when it comes to the relief core, because you didn't see them add anything to the relief core in these moves, obviously. I wouldn't be surprised if they add some guys there or even another cat to the rotation. So everybody have a great season. Plus, day. thank you for watching. Video on the Rangers having a heck of an offseason so far, by far an A-grade offseason by getting John Gray, Marcus Simeon, Cole Calhoun, and of course the great Corey Seager as long as he's able to stay steadily on the field, and I really hope he can because he's one of the most fun players to watch. Peace out everybody, and enjoy the rest of the offseason, and let's hope and pray that they can somehow come up with a miracle when it comes to the CBA.